I would do if I was allowed to. Yeah. Do you think we should do that in the studio? So you're bringing your later yeah. show. <laughs> I think that's quite normal to kind of crimp. Are you yeah. Thinking? What? Yeah. Singing crimp around the house. You know? Oh, yes. What do you mean, like just with a guitar at home? Well, not with the guitar. Oh, right. Well, but you're gonna, but well, you're gonna have your guitar soon because you're bringing yeah. your show, the later show, four to five yes. to London. Absolutely. Dare I say it? During the festive season? Yeah. Yes, we can say that. We Always can bring fun. up Christmas. Um, and you had to learn some new instruments. Yeah, you? a couple of new instruments. Yeah, yeah um, let's talk about the laser harp. Oh, the laser harp. Well, yeah. the laser harp is as it sounds. It's a, it's a, a, a harp, but made out of lasers as opposed to strings. And so the lasers are all connected to musical generating software. So you put your hand through the beam of the laser and it triggers the sound. So you can technically play it as if you were playing an actual harp, but it is with light. And there is this no speed. Just move your hand through the light and it plays an instrument. It's visual as well. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful. Jean-Michel Jarre, you remember him? Yeah. He yeah. pioneered it back in the day. And uh, and I'm reviving it now for in, this, in, a, in, in a comedic way. And so that's my that's my one of the big instruments I'm using in the show. Also, I taught myself the bagpipes. So because I've always wanted to play the bagpipes, I don't know why. Difficult. Just, it's hard. It is mm. tricky, but it's it's very rewarding. Yeah. And uh, you have to practice kind of a long way off. Yeah. You have to, you know. Mm. But nice sound when you get it. Yeah. Um, now apparently you met some musicians in Australia. Yes. That then influenced some of this show. That's correct. Yeah. Tell us about them then. Believe That's me. right. Well, I was making a documentary about Western Australia, and um, part of the the doco we we spent time in a place called Albany, down in the southwestern part of Australia, and there's a group there called the Albany Shantymen, and they sort of went. They sang this song, uh, a, a sea shanty. Uh, and it went viral, and they invited me to perform with them. So um, it was great. It was great fun. And, uh, and so it like, the song? The songs, it's, well, sea shanties, you know, they're kind of like a cappella. Yeah. So you sort of sing these songs. So somebody starts something, goes, oh, 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 and then the whole crowd goes, oh, 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 like that. And that's what I do in the show. So I've got, I've, I've used a bit of sea shanty sort of nonsense. You're mixing yeah. things up a bit. New yeah. instruments, new sounds, which is brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. Let's talk about the memoir, um, because wildlife is another passion of yours. It is, yes. yeah. But in the memoir, you talk about the animals you've met th over the years and not people. So we wanted to ask about, is it Jakob? Jakob, yes. Jakob the cockatoo. Cockatoo. So tell us about... Jakob the cockatoo, yes. well, she had an amazing life. I mean, it's a she, and she was a cockatoo that was was caught in the wild in Papua New Guinea. And a couple, a Western couple who happened to be working there, saw her in the, in this village and took pity on her, oh. took her home. Then they, then they, the, 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 the chap was a, he was a pilot and he got a job with the Sultan of Oman. So she got to live in this palace for a bit. And then they moved back to England. They couldn't work, couldn't live with her anymore. So they couldn't look after her. So we looked after her. So she's had this amazing life. Oh and um, she's but no, she's slumming it in West London. Yeah, in West London now. Yeah, yeah. listening oh. to the bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and is it right, Bill, that if we came to yours for a dinner party, say, yes, yes, you would prefer us to bring a little pet as a gift, as well, opposed a to a box of chocolates or a bottle of wine? People do that, though. Yes, we've I've had that before. We had a couple come to uh, friends of ours who one of them was a, a beetle expert, and the other one was a spider expert, and they um, caught you know as you do and. Uh, they brought some uh, Madagascan hissing cockroaches as a, oh, as a gift. Oh. And for most people, that would be the, your worst nightmare. Yeah. And also, most people would bring a bottle of wine. <laughs> so, uh, but it was... <laughs> but it's a talking point. It was a talking yeah. point, yes. You know. And they were great at fun, actually. They did actually hiss. They, pss, they were like, you know, someone trying to get your attention the whole time. And um, they were... still have them? No, we don't. No, sadly not. No, they don't yeah. live that long, sadly. Um, yeah. And uh, they used to live in the next to the washing machine, and they got into one pair of my trousers once. Oh. And I pulled my jeans on, and a big cockroach fell out of the bottom. Oh. Most people, that would be the worst nightmare. Yeah. Mm. But in our house, you just go. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill's book, My Animals and Other Animals, is out on the 11th of October, and you can see him in Thortifier at the Theatre Royal Haymarket in London from the 28th of December. Thank yes. you, Bill. Ooh.